Hi, boys and girls. I would like you to welcome my new partner, Sarah Star Coder. Give her a hand of applause. Well, thank you for that welcome. I am, I think you meant round of applause, but that's okay. Hi, boys and girls. It is so, so nice to meet you. I am so excited to be here. Today, boys and girls, we kind of sort of flipped the script. We sent Mr. McLaughlin out on assignment. He is going to be looking for some, what do we call, geocaches. And Sarah and I will be telling you what geocaches are, how do you do this geocaching thing, and all that sciencey stuff. I'm going to leave that up to Sarah to explain some of that. Okay, I am I can take care of that. First, before we talk about geocaching, we have to talk about something called GPS. GPS is Global Positioning System. It's a satellite-based navigation system made up of at least 24 satellites. Now, GPS works in any weather conditions, anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, and it's free. The Defense Department, USDOD originally put out the satellites in orbit for military use, but then they were made available for civilian use in the 1980s. The GPS satellites circle the Earth twice a day in a precise orbit. Each satellite transmits a unique signal and orbital parameters that allow the GPS devices to decode and compute the precise location of the satellite. GPS receivers use this information and trilateration, I'll show you what that is in a couple minutes, to calculate a user's exact location. Essentially, the GPS receiver measures the distance to each satellite by the amount of time it takes to receive a transmitted signal. With this distance measurements from a few more satellites, the receiver can determine a user's position and display it electronically to your device, whether it's your phone, your watch, your Garmin device in your car, or a special GPS device. Now let's talk about trilateration. That's when you have the satellite measuring its distance to whatever is receiving the signal. That means for one satellite, you're somewhere on a giant ball. When you take two satellites, you have two balls intersecting, which means you're somewhere on a circle. When you have three balls intersecting, that means you're somewhere along two points that could possibly be your location. Now, how do you narrow that down? Pretty simple. It's the location that's on the Earth, because the other one is in space. And we all know there's no air in space, so that would make it really hard to breathe. I am, that is a terrible joke. You are so corny. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Ugh. So now that we know some things about GPS, it is time to look at geocaching. Mr. McLaughlin is on assignment looking for a geocache treasure right now. Let's tune in and see what his first treasure is, and then we'll talk about how do we find geocaches and what are geocaches. Hi, everybody. I have the audio working. I'm just tuning into the video. Yes, Here we Mr. go. Blackland, I think it's I coming we are through getting now. Your video feed Live right now. from the car. Here's uh, I Tommy. I really have to stop doing things like that. So I am driving to my first geocache location. If you know the area, you might be able to figure out where I am. I will, of course, post the GPS locations of the geocache. Location to see if we can find something. So here we are pulling in. Some of you might recognize this spot. So I think I may have found our hidden thing here. So let's look, see if we can find it together. 
I'm looking at these rocks. And these rocks look kind of Oh, flat. I see it. It's right there under the rock. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we may have found the treasure. There's oh, the number. I'm so excited. What did you find? We have the log. Let's see what else we have. We have an earring. Oh, I want the earring. I want the earring. Some pencils. Fire. All the stuff has to be put back. That's the way a geocache works. Now be quiet. A bracelet. A bottle cap. A rock. And open up. The log book. Look at all the people who have found this and signed it. Let's see. So today is the 10th. Let me leave uh, on the camera. Mr. McLaughlin, the camera's going crooked. We can't see. Nine. Yeah, you're gonna need to fix that. Twenty. Twenty. And we're gonna write innovation class. Hopefully, if you come and look, you can find the log. And we can see that there's another sheet of log and more log. All the people who have signed it. put this in and attach it. We'll put ours on top. As you can see. Now we gotta take it and put it back where we found it. Cover it back up with this rock. Okay, our first geocache. So now we've seen Mr. McLaughlin do his geocaching. We are all ready to go and geocache ourselves. Let's go. Not so fast, I am. We have to do a little bit more work first to find out what exactly is geocaching and how we can do geocaching responsibly. So let's open up an internet browser and go to the website that has all the information about geocaching. Geocaching.com. Sarah, that sounds like a great idea. It looks like there's some videos here we could watch and learn about geocaching and how to do it responsibly. Geocaching is an any day, anytime adventure that can take you to amazing and beautiful places or even just to a place in your town that you've never been before. There are millions of geocaches worldwide. There are probably even some near you right now. Yes, you. To start finding them, just get out your phone or GPS. Go ahead. I'll wait. Then, Create a free geocaching account and you're ready to go. The way it works is simple. Just choose the geocache you want to find, then navigate to its location. What you're looking for varies. Geocaches come in different sizes, shapes, and difficulties. Geocaching isn't always easy, so it's okay to get excited when you discover the cache. After finding it, sign the logbook. Trade knickknacks if you want and log your find online. When you're done, just put the geocache back where you found it and you're on to the next one. Uh, hey, it's the other way. There's an adventure happening all the time, all around you. Become a part of it at geocaching.com. when you find a geocache, it'll be filled with seemingly random items. You don't have to trade, but if you do, there are a few guidelines. Trade equal or up? Everything should be legal and safe. Food and
and smelly items might attract animals. And animals don't even know how to geocache. Instead of being kept like trade items, trackables move from geocache to geocache. They come in all shapes and sizes, and they all have a unique tracking code and the words trackable at geocaching.com. Before you take one, make sure you know what to do with it. And if you're not quite sure, leave it for the next geocacher. Even if it's super cool looking. To the untrained eye, geocaches and geocachers might look a little suspicious. While you're out searching, keep an eye out for curious onlookers. If people are nearby, be as nonchalant as possible. Geocachers are known for being environmentally friendly. That means not trampling plants and animals and respecting natural areas. We even have a thing called cash in, trash out, aka Sido. It means that whenever you're out geocaching, pack out any trash you see. This one's easy. Just think before you geocache. Come prepared, obey local laws, and keep yourself safe. I think we have time for one last check-in with Mr. McLaughlin to see if he has found any other geocaches. Mr. McLaughlin, are you there? Hi, I am Sarah. Yep, I'm turning on the video now. I am just crossing a bridge. Okay, so for this cache, we are going to drive across the bridge, but not the bridge you think. So this one is a little hard to find. You have to go down a road that looks like it's a dead end road, but it does lead to a park. And we're gonna go look for this geocache now to see if we can find it. It's done by the Girl Scouts. Okay, okay so we're outside now. And I'm going to go and see if I can find it. Let me go flip the camera around. Look up to this pole. And let's see what we got here. It just looks like a pole. What's this? This looks interesting. Oh, look at that. It looks like we have found the geocache. Let's see what's in here. There's all kinds of things in here. I don't think the whole pole comes up. I guess that's just to keep it from falling all the way through. So here's the log. Let me go sign the log and then put everything back. The log, we're gonna sign it. Looks like we're number 33. There we go, we signed it. Innovation, Mr. McLaughlin, and this was inside of it. And this was inside, so we're going to put it all back in and put it back up. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for having me. Yep, Mr. McLaughlin should be on his way back and ready to show us some more about how do we make geocaches. Have a great day. Bye for now. Well, hi, boys and girls. I am back from my geocaching journey. That was so, so much fun. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is just switch this shot to a closer shot so you can see my board and see me better. Okay, so I'm also going to turn on my screen at the same time, and here we are. And what I've done is I've loaded up Scratch. So you just sign into your account and start a new project in Scratch, and I have created two sprites here. One is, of course, the cat sprite, and I'm going to rename our cat sprite by clicking on it and typing cat. Let me get a little bit closer so you guys can see that. There we go. 
So you can see what I've done. I clicked on cat and I typed cat and then I made a little prize and the prize is really just a sprite I drew using the paint feature and drew a little X and then I placed that little X up here in the far right hand corner. So now my cat is going to get some code to make the cat search for the prize. So first thing we want to do is put in an event. So that way when we first turn on our program, our cat goes through and searches for our prize. So let me make this screen a little bit easier to see for me to see. There we go. And I'll zoom in on the code so you can see that. So I'm going to go to events. I'm going to go when green flag clicked. There we go. And when the green flag is clicked, the first thing I want to do is set the cat size to 10%. So that way the cat is really small and it gives the cat a lot of area to search around for the prize. Then we're going to use motion and we're going to go to a starting spot which is negative 240 and negative 180. This will be where the cat starts from, which is the lower left-hand corner here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I want to time the cat. Is, so I'm going to reset the timer in order to keep track of how long the cat takes the search. Now, in order to make this a little bit more organized, I'm going to create my own block that is going to do a random search of the screen. I'm going to click on create a new block and type in random search. So I get two things that happen. I get this define block that is going to let me put code in there, but then I also get a new block called random search. And I want to do that right after the timer. So when I hit green flag, it's going to do all these things and then do a random search. So let's define what a random search is. So a random search is we're going to start with a forever loop because we're going to keep doing this forever until the target is found. Put a control in forever loop. Then we're going to have the cat just go to somewhere random on the screen. And then we have to check to see if that random spot was where the target was. So I'm going to do another block just because I like doing keeping things organized. And I'm going to say cache found check. So we're going to check to see if we found the geocache. I'm going to put that new block in here. We're going to check to see if it was found. And then I have to define the block. So there's two parts when you create your own block. You have to first call it and define it. Second, make sure it's defined. So we have to call it and it has to be defined. Both those things have to be done. So now we're going to define our cache found. And I'm going to use a conditional and just check. And I want to check to see if the cat is touching the prize. So I'm going to go to sensing. And I'm going to use this little block here. Where is it? There we go. Touching mouse pointer. But I want to change it from touching mouse pointer to touching the prize. So if the cat is touching the prize, then I want to tell everybody we found it. So I'm going to do this again in a different way. I'm going to use a broadcast message. So I'm going to go to events. Actually, above events. Yep, there we go. There's events. And I'm going to broadcast a message and the message, whoops, not there. Not there either. There we go. Get in there. So the message I want to broadcast is a new message and say found prize. Now, nothing will happen unless I catch that message, unless the message is received by something. So when I receive the message, found prize, the first thing I need to do is stop searching. So I'm going to go to this little stop block, which is under control and change it from stop all because I want to keep doing other stuff. I just want to stop everything else except for what's going to happen right here. So I'm going to stop all their scripts in this sprite. 
I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to set the size to back to 100. And then I'm going to have the cat say how long it took the cat to find our price. I'm going to save that for 20 seconds. And what I want to say is the timer value. I'm going to say the timer value. So let me make this code a little bigger. And I'm going to let you just kind of copy down this code and create it yourself in your own project. So if you want to pause it and create it yourself, you can. You don't have to, but if you would like to do something like this yourself, here it is. Okay, so let's see how long it takes the cat to go ahead and find that target. And here we go. He's bouncing all over the screen. Maybe we can get a little closer. He's taking a little bit of a while. He's really small though. Trying to find that X. He get close. Oh, he looked like he got close there. Almost. Oh, it took him 25.61 seconds to find the target. So that's pretty good. Um, but if we had the exact location, instead of doing a random search, suppose we knew the exact GPS location. So it's a lot like our geocache. We could randomly roam around the world looking for prizes and treasures, but it's a lot easier if we have the coordinates of our geocache. So I'm going to define a new block. And I'm going to call this one go to GPS. All right. And instead of doing a random search, I'm going to go to the specific GPS coordinates. And the way I'm going to do that is with a go to statement. And I just need to know where my prize is. So if I click on prize and I look, I can see the location is at 210 and 145. So I'm going to put in the numbers 210 and 145. Click on my cat again. Go to the code block. 210, 145. And when my cat goes to that spot, I want it to say that the cache was found. Right, we go to that spot and we're going to check to see if it found it. We're going to see if this method works. So we're going to use that method that we defined earlier and use it again. That's the beauty of defining blocks. Once you've created them, you can use them over again. So we're going to check to see if we found it. So let's give this a try and see how long it takes our cat to find the prize using the actual GPS coordinates. Here we go. Green flag, zero seconds. Let me do that again. Zero seconds. Move the cat anywhere on the screen and hit green flag, zero seconds. It takes the cat no time at all to find it. So if you have the GPS coordinates, it is really, really easy to find our cat. Okay, so that was a whole lot of fun. What I'm gonna do now is pull up the geocaching website which is, for your information, geocaching.com. And you can create your own account and start looking for geocaches out in the world. It turns out that there's a lot of them locally here in New Hope. If we take a look, I can see all the different geocaches in New Hope. So here is Peddler's Village, and you can see there are some geocaches. Here's one of the ones I found, that one, that was um, a geocache celebrating 10 years of geocaching. That's a lot of geocaching. And then there's some here, and then you can see that there's a whole bunch here down by the McDonald's, and then there's some over here by the giant. And then there's a couple, I know there's some in town. 
So there's lots of different places that you can look for geocaches. So you go to the website, you pick a geocache. So let's say we go to soccer and picnics. I think I know where that one is. And when we see it, we can click on more information. You get a little closer view here. And it'll open up another page for us and tell us about this location. So it has a GPS location, which you could find by typing into your phones, or you could download the app and find the location just from the geocaching app. And this one is on a little hill, not a whole lot of excitement. Watch out for poison ivy. We do have to be careful of things. Oh, and it's over at the Pat Livesey Park. Oh, and there's some kind of code. Hmm. Hmm. That we have to figure out in order to find out about the cache. Hmm. Uh, and it's a micro. So it means it's going to be something really, really small and well hidden. I wonder if any of you guys can find it. That'd be really awesome if you go ahead and look for this and try to find it and, and sign the log. It looks like it's only been signed five times. And we can see that the last time it was found was August 28th, 2020. So there's a good chance that it is still there in that spot and you'll be able to find it. I'm also going to hide one and I will tell you where that is later in our assignments and you could go look for that one as well so that is our episode for this week i'll see you next time